All right, we're on the PTR server. Let's take a look at the new unit. I did not cover the patch notes because I forgot. This Divinit looks like a Ben Beckman or Monkey Day Dragon. So yeah, you know what's up. S3 deals true damage to all enemies. True damage is a 80% if attack plus 100% of defense. It inflicts Convict for two turns. Each debuff on the target increases damage by 10%. Uh, so you can, this guy can be built with like either defense or attack um, and he's dealing true damage so true damage is not gonna crit or maybe it's gonna crit on him this light is not consistent with that so we'll check that out later it's on a 5 turn cooldown okay cool his s2 gains punish evil for 2 turns at the cost of 30% hp if hp is below 70% also gains intimidate for 2 turns gains a bonus turn this ability won't be affected by any other abilities it's on a two turn cooldown maxed out and punish evil is undispellable base attack plus 50 percent plus two percent for each plus two percent boost each time enemies are inflicted with debuffs by any teammate up to 150 percent is this permanent i don't know this one doesn't say it's permanent so punish evil is only for two turns but it's up to 150 percent so maybe this is permanent and then base defense plus 50% plus 2% boost each time Jinchu is granted buffs by any teammate up to 100% uh, 150% and counting once per target per turn. These effects do not change in real time. I don't even know what this means. So I don't know if this is going to be permanent. I'm going to check that out later. Dealing damage recovers HP. Healing is equal to 20% of the damage. Jinchu gains shield at the end of her turn. Okay, <laughs> her turn. Shield uh, strength is equal to 30% of max HP, that's quite huge. And then S1 is deals true damage to one enemy. True damage is 80% of attack plus 100% of defense. While having punish evil, attacks two more enemies and inflicts convict for two turns. While having intimidate, dispels one debuff from him and increases AP by 30%. That's quite huge. Alright, so convict is when the carrier attacks, they take true damage. True damage equals to 4% of their max HP doesn't say anything about bosses so does boss take like 4% of their max HP as well that's quite huge if it is when they take damage the caster's AP plus 10% triggers once per turn so it's like a AOE Mateo in a sense because Mateo when your allies crit with the uh, spark debuff he gains like 5% AP right whereas this guy the enemy uh, the carrier with the convict buff uh, debuff uh, gets damage they take true damage and then he also gains AP just like Mateo and then he also gains like base attack just like Mateo so it's like an AOE Mateo in a sense but he seems uh, this guy seems to be really good for bossing contents but his main problem is this gains a bonus turn and it's on a two turn cooldown that is extremely fast and since he's going to be cycling like crazy because he gains AP from the convict buff and also from the S1 when he has the intimidate buff he is going to kind of eat up your turn count way too fast so he might be good in bosses he seems really good but yeah like i said the main problem is going to be the turn count um and also he doesn't extend his uh buffs so units that gain bonus turn and does not extend buffs is uh kind of iffy because you know attack buff he's doing one turn doing nothing just applying buffs to himself but not extending buffs you know that the ally provides with the, like the attack buff crit rate buff and stuff like that so uh, i don't know this uh great gains a bonus turn on a two turn cooldown might be detrimental for him attack lead is in uh, pve r2 is when any teammate inflicts debuffs on enemy grounds the teammate punish evil evil for one turn okay half the punish evil effect the jinchu grants to himself with unchanged ra ratios Triggers once per turn when any teammate grants buffs to Jinchu, uh, grants the teammate an intimidate for one turn. So, yeah, this is actually quite really good. I think his R2 is going to be huge for bossing contents because now he's giving this Punish Evil, which is massive 25% uh, base attack and 25% defense. I don't know if this is going to give the additional stuff that he gets, right? Like this part. This uh, up to 150% and counting one. But if it does, then it's going to be pretty insane. But if it doesn't, then it's going to be still very good. He's like an Ahmed in a sense. Ahmed gives like 60% base attack when maxed out. Whereas this guy gives 25% um, base attack 
and also base defense. And then his R4, when HP is above 50% damage plus 15%. R6 is Pump Fatigue, gains Intimidate at the start of combat. Casting Pump Fatigue does not receive extra Intimidate effects. New effect, Intimidate in Immune to Stun and Sleep, okay. He's still able to be frozen and petrified though, so yeah. Not completely immune to stunts, but yeah, I think his R6 is gonna be quite mess. Nah, maybe for, for PvP, but for PvE, not too much. Let's take a look. Intimidate is, yeah, I don't think he's gonna be that huge for even PvP. Uh, the stun and sleep aspect is gonna be huge, but gaining Intimidate at the start of combat in PvP is not really gonna do much because he gains um, the shield strength at the end of his turn. Not at the start of combat, so that's not going to be too much. Let's take a look. HP, defense, attack. So yeah, he's going to be a very bruiser-ish unit. You probably want to build him with like a full defense, not so much attack. His attack is quite low, 1,046. Uh, 1, HP is uh, okay. Defense is also eh, not that much uh, for a bruiser unit, so I mean it's Kinda expected because he scales with both attack and defense. If it's a bit too high, then it's gonna be pretty insane. Alright, I don't have any gears on him, but he's uh, maxed out. Let's take a look. Is the AI going to start with the S2 or the S3? If it starts with the S3, then it's kinda stupid. Okay, nice. Uses the S2 first. So, yeah, that's good. And then he uses the S3. Okay, he does like 30. 3,000 um, on each of them. Oh wait, why did it take true damage? Oh, it's when the carry attacks. I thought it was, it's not when the carry is getting attacked, it's when the carry attacks, so it's not like Mateo. Mateo is when the, air, when the carry gets critted on, right? Whereas this guy, when the carry attacks. So if the boss is like super fast, then he's gonna be taking 4% uh, true damage every single time that uh, they attack. But this one is AoE, right? Whereas Mateo is still single target when he applies the spark. So if you apply it on all five, then when they take a turn, they're gonna give him 50% attack bar. I already have my S2 up. So yeah, because it's on a two turn cooldown, he's probably gonna spam it right now, yep. So you pretty much have it up at like all times. Look at that, I have it up again. I pretty much have it up at all times and it cannot be, um, cooldown increase as well so yeah that's gonna be a problem because he keeps gaining an extra turn so contents with like a uh, turn limit which is everything is gonna be a big problem for him now we're gonna see if the true damage can actually crit I have brought a Dahlia right here and he has a 68% with Dahlia that's a 98% let's take a look it's probably not gonna crit yep he doesn't crit so he, all of his attacks cannot crit. His S1 does true damage, his S3 also does true damage. So the way that you're going to build him is like with zero crit rate, since he cannot crit, right? And also with um, maximum attack and defense. Okay, let's bring all of this. Now we'll see if his damage actually increases or does it not increase. I'm going to be attacking... Uh, actually, I'm going to remove Hilda real quick because Hilda defense break so remove Hilda now we'll see what's my damage on this guy 6388 okay so when I buff up with Clara and Unas is his damage going to increase or is it still going to stay the same 6 okay he does get it so it does um, apply every single turn I think let's see let's see let's see if I let it uh, let the buff run out and I recast it, let's check. Now if I cast the S2 back, does it still do 6 6388 or 6406? Okay, nice. So he actually retains the 150%. So every single time that your ally buff you up, he actually retains this 150% um, whenever he cast it. Yeah, he looks like a really good unit. Um, I might summon for him maybe R2 because his R2 is actually quite uh, insane as well for bossing content. And Celestial Anomaly might be coming in the next patch. So he's going to be 
probably insane in that one but like I said the main problem is going to be Zestu he spams it a bit too much he every other turn he's going to eat up your turn counter by one turn which is quite massive so yeah that's why Gaius is not used in Celestial Anomaly he's not used in Sentinel Hunt all that much except for Dark Starlord and he's not used in like any PvE content that requires that has turn limit. You can probably hear like uh, raining sounds in the background. So yeah, um, yeah, that's why Gaius isn't used. And Gaius only eats up your turn count every three turns. This guy is going to eat up your turn count every two turns. I'll give it a shot in my main account. Maybe I'll I'll summon for him. But he's gonna be really good for towers and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's about it for the new unit. I'm gonna check out other stuff from the uh, update in the PTR server but yeah